certainly that the way that the president chose to respond at this moment on Sunday was a bit of a surprise. And we saw some of that volatility, including on Asia markets, at the start of the week. But certainly, if you've, if you've been following these negotiations over the past several months, what we had is a situation where Vice Premier Liu He, this is the lead Chinese negotiator, uh, he went back to Beijing in February with a deal. And since then, we've had very intense negotiations between both Washington and Beijing with a lot of sort of market positive talk about how progress was was coming, but nothing really concrete to show for that. And you, you saw that the, the deadline for a deal kept slipping, if you're talking to the negotiators. That's a sign that Liu Ho was having difficulty either selling that deal back in Beijing or that Beijing looked at what he agreed to and then has been coming back to Washington saying, hey, we need to re-clarify what was intended by this particular phrase or this particular chapter of the negotiation. USTR Lighthizer's comments just in the past few days seem to confirm this. And now the president himself is saying that China is walking back from what they had agreed to. Mm -hmm. So when you think about what should we expect moving forward, I think it's pretty safe to say that there is very little chance that Liu Ho will come to Washington on Thursday with a smaller delegation than planned and be able to come up with the kind of concessions that the U.S. president says he needs to be able to avert another escalation in tariffs on Friday. Dean, it seems like China's playing a little bit tougher here. Do you think that they're at risk of overplaying their hand in these negotiations? I think they've actually overplayed their hand a fair bit in a number of ways already. I think that um, when the Chinese basically came into this, they seem to have the idea that, for example, in the telecom industry, um, that they really were already ruling the roost. And, of course, it turns out that ZTE is largely dependent on the import of American chips. I think, again, across a number of sectors, it turns out that it's uh, the United States that has uh, a far stronger hand to play. Um, and at the end of the day, if the full set of tariffs go in, not just on the $200 billion, but uh, if I remember right, there's another $300 billion that's also potentially on the table, uh, the Chinese don't really have anything that they can reciprocate against. I mean, certainly they can further raise tariffs on soybeans and, and aircraft, but at the end of the day, this is the ironic situation is that the U.S. does import more from China and can place more tariffs. Meredith, how long can President Trump play tough for? Because there's lots of talk just in terms of how big of a pullback we could see in the markets. The Dow selling off today with it off over 500 points. I mean, this is something that is a big issue to a lot of investors. Right. I think the, the, the key watch point here is how the U.S. economy fares moving forward. And, and by that, I mean not just the stock market, but look at key elements of his base. The farmers are going to be hard hit. Uh, American consumers are also going to be hard hit. And it's going to take a, a few months for these tariffs to really bake in and for those costs to percolate out. The key here, and, and I think Dean was also uh, uh, was talking about this as well, is which economy is going to be the more resilient and being able to wait out the other side. And this is not really about tariffs. This is about two different, fundamentally different economic models. And Washington is saying to Beijing, you have got to make yourself more of a market-based economy. You've got to make these structural reforms so that it's more of a fair and level playing field, Beijing is going to bend far enough to be able to make the kind of reforms that she believes is in China's own interest. But he is not going to sacrifice key elements of his state-directed economic model. And that's what really this confrontation is about. And Dean, you could argue the fact that China is in a much better place than they were just a couple of months ago or going back to 2018, just in terms that they have been able to stabilize their economy a little bit. We have seen a resurgence in their stock market, so they are in a much better place than they were not too long ago. Uh, that's certainly true. But on the other hand, we're also seeing some indications here, a slowing rate of growth. Uh, we're seeing um, some evidence here, with uh, particularly because this is the year of anniversaries in China. We have Tiananmen 30th anniversary. We have the 100th anniversary of the May 4th movement. There's a lot of internal volatility apart from the economy. Xi Jinping has to be looking at all of this and is going to be worried about trying to keep a lid on things. And a slowing economy, slowing exports, uh, those are the sorts of things that will simply throw uh, gas, if not naphtha, on the fire. 
Yeah, and uh, Meredith, one thing that stuck out to me, Torsten Slack was out with a note earlier this week and saying that U.S. now, if we in fact do go through with these tariff hikes, that, that the U.S. is one of the highest tariff countries in the world, which is certainly a huge shift than what we have seen in the past. Well, it certainly shows you that the U.S. president does see the use of tariffs as a useful tool for him to try to compel uh, changes in trading relationships. But going back to a point that, that Dean was saying, are the Chinese really concerned about the kind of economic pressure that this tariff war is bringing to bear? Yes. Are they panicking? No. Mm -hmm. And we at Eurasia Group, we do not fundamentally think that Xi Jinping is going to step back from the state-directed economic model that he thinks is imperative to the party's continued uh, power base within, within uh, China's economy and the ability of the Chinese economy to reform in a way that will allow the party to retain control over key levers of the state economy. Mm -hmm. We're not at a point yet that, you know, look, even if we get to 5.5% growth, that's still not all that bad. Mm -hmm. We clocked in above 3% growth in Q1 in the U.S. and found that was, was quite remarkable. So slow in economy in China, yes, but can the China, do the Chinese leadership believe that they can manage these tensions currently? Yes. All right. Meredith and Dean, thanks so much for joining me today.